afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting and everything and amazing propaganda cast with me, your host and Pearl Dane, the one and only Master Propaganda of Theatre Glorious 1v1 one one own Patino Stalemate in the North Stands Blood Fighting for America Freedom Democracy. Here with the first armor division in the South Stands, the Imperial Dane himself, fighting here for the third Panzer Grenadier Division. Strain to break through with a Cadden Cart opening, since Pacino found is a map where Cadden Carts work fairly well here. No sign of meaty choice here though from Bulad, just scouts and riflemen. As always, a big hearty thanks to my patron supporters for their continued and generous support of the Prominent Cast. Allow me to keep making all these videos. A big thanks to all those wonderful people who like and comment on the videos. If never mind, subscribe to them to help you know the YouTube algorithms get the word out of the Propaganda Cast. So, off to those as we are here, we do get armoured for Bulad. Veteran cruiser course, incredibly good ability there to get just immediately veterans run on all your vehicles. And typically also get fast deploy, but so far, no one's on that here from Bulat. Cat and Crack Racing Norfords, Granny is out the center here. And South Pani is on the move. Meanwhile, Bulat Racing center north. Otherwise, not much here. Not much here. Sandbags of the fuel point, standard stuff, from me at least. Raft's caught on the fuel point, me. Got the scouts popping here to you. Cadden Crouch can, I think, do a bit of quick scan here, spotting the scouts and just popping out of there. Helps keep your Cadden Crouch alive. You use that quick scan ability on it. Second raft squad at the football lot. Freedom and democracy in the South Pioneers probing through here the southern terrain, crossing the stream. Moving straight into the southern high munitions point, wiring it off here. Cadden Crouch for nice south as well. Grenadiers can approach the center here. MG42 flaps support the Grenadiers. Shots fired here. First engagement here, close to the church. Both here looking to make an attempt to church here, Grandiers though. End up taking a bit sillier path there. Scouts probing northwards, of course. And Ken Crowd is just racing southwards. Right near as the Grandiers inside the church. MU42 moving up as well here. Max Schnell made the machine give out Arthur. Yeah, yeah. Third Rob Squad there for Blood. Rob Squad slightly dodging about here. As the MU42 moves in and trying to deal with the Yankees. Northern Mace point them excuse for the scouts here, rather than getting host here, but the info too. And of course, got the Grenadiers from, from another angle in the south here. Pioneers, Cadden Kratz, rapid advancing here for the third Panzer Grenadier. Meanwhile, first armored here, S4 start at the center of Pacino. That's right, Pacino. It's not Pacino, it's Pacino. I keep getting reminded of that, and I keep forgetting it. I do apologize. So, ground the point, and of course, thanks to those who do try to provide me with the. Well, feedback in a very nice and polite manner. Some people are not always very good at being polite about providing feedback. So, got the centre secured for the fatherland. The south here, Ken Crack Racing Ford's Pioneers as well here. Spotting the raft squad here, Grenadiers advancing. Got the MP40s up here. South here, Pioneers being run by the raft and going straight here for the raft squad by the fuel point. I'm going to be taking up fairly aggressively. I'm actually trying to tone down on my MP40 Grenadier usage, though I won't do that. I'm kind of going heavy on it because they are quite handy for fighting battle against rifle, which does be, I find be a bit tough. But at the same time, I also imagine MP40s on the Grenadiers are going to get nerfed because they are definitely a bit too good, especially with fast veterans one. So, Ralph's quarter front of the Grenadiers by the fuel point. First of the south, Ralph growing point C. We got the Grenadiers advancing up here. Skirmishing here as Bullard, of course, is trying to get the fuel point back. Machining there setting up to cover the fuel point as well here. What will Bullard do? If he's smart, he's going to try and flank around here. So, only one of the features of Burkina I like is you know, actually have some interesting flank, flank paths using the town center. And that looks to be exactly what Bullard is doing there. Thumbs up to him. Going to support here. Panzer Grenadier Company up. Well, it's going up with some Panzer Grenadiers on the way in the near future. Ralph's caught flying up here, tagging with the new squad here. No flame throws yet here for Blatt. Caught here by the Grenadiers in the fort. they go? Flanks it up here. Flame throws done as well there for Blatt's engineers. Thumbs up. Just notice the number of attack angles he has here against my position. And that was a really well set up attack here by Blatt. Forced me to meet, withdraw, or start losing a lot of units. Two thumbs up to Blatt. That was perfect. Of course, for me, obviously that was horrifying but you know from a general more higher perspective that was an incredibly well sort of you know all assault there from blood got the captain out there for blood as well very common pick there south the engineers pushing back my pioneers and so far blood has managed to completely well crumble the entire ball that is my force of course partly is because i am going for fast panzer grenadiers rather than just three grenadiers for veterans one he does have a bit more room for that though of course 
There's, of course, the argument that my counterattack is going to be then a bit more fiercer thanks to the faster Panzer Grenadiers out there with their Sturmgewehr 44. And, of course, more MP40 Grenadiers. So, straight for the fuel pony, which has Panzer and neutral. Closing in here for the father and Panzer Grenadiers back to the Grenadiers. Now, with MP40s ripping through here. Bullard's men, like they're made out of string cheese. Switching out to my perspective. Ken Crowd here going on a very long deep flank here trying to stay clear of most of the Americans and still get spotted. Breakthrough pick there. Nice ability for the quick grabbing a lot of terrain. Hunter pushing south. We've got all three points control here of Bulat and Democracy. And he is here and MD40 pushing back here. Bulat's wrapping up north. In the center up north of Bulat is also making progress here. Just a lot of back and forth here. A lot of maneuvers. Grabbing the center. Support elements going up so and get prepared for a fast Stug. I've yet to see any BARs in Bullets, of course. I have to concern myself with the possibility of being hit by a fast Greyhound. So, if possible, I want to like set up for a fast Stug. If possible, of course, for Bullard, he wants to hit my fuel points to ensure I do not get out of fast Stug. So, as you might notice there, he's going hard on the fuel points here. Smart play there, of course, by Bullard. In particular, since current Valmont meta game is like you either push for a fast Stug. Or you push for a not so fast but still fast Panzer IV. So either way though, heading your opponent's fuel points is typically very sensible strategically. So so far, but like I say, he's handling this strategy so far fairly well. Of course, I'm not quite committing as hard to the full MP40 Grenadier strategy as I could. You know, that doesn't mean it is any less dangerous in some respects. North Hick Grenadier's push back. My forces are a bit scattered all the place, but admittedly so are bullets. And the South Indian is caught by the Panzer Grenadier's. I got breakthrough to help grab points back fast as well. Heading back on map control. Again, fuel point then rendered neutral. There's a lot of back and forth between the Bulat and each enforcing. I do also need healing, but again, I got that little timer in my head that says, you know, I have to worry about the Greyhound. So I can't just allow myself to slow down for the healing anytime soon. Do get the mode pull up there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Healing there, the good old medical station. Rafting on the fuel point again up north here, Glenys with Rafting the northern fuel point. I got another Panzer Glenys squad in the way because, well, I'm not going to be anywhere close to the Stug, so I may as well commit to more, you know, advanced infantry there. We shouldn't give us the scouts. Getting a good taste what's to come. So, so far, it's just a lot of series of small engagements here, smaller pushes, nothing yet aggressively decisive on either side. Mostly a fight to like see who can like in the mess be able to play as fuel supply as much as possible and slow down their plan in some respect. Again, in Bullard's case, it's going to be like the slowing down a Stug in part because I am known for going for Stug. So, you know, if you hit my fuel, you definitely know I'm not going to be able to get out those Stugs as fast as I'd like. But of course, versus the Americans, it could be slowing down either Bars or a Greyhound. So there's definitely merit in both cases. Partly again, while Malta trying to hit Panzer Grenadiers hard alongside those MP40 Grenadiers, is in part this is also why the MP40 Grenadier strategies are possible because by going for it, you kind of force your opponents out to like deal with it with upgrading faster bars, or you risk your rifle just getting melted away there. Grenadiers here though definitely get melted. They may have the flamethrower, but the Panzer Grenadiers have the Sturmgewehr. So there they go, brutal engagement here, pulling back the Panzer Grenadiers get the merged up here. That way, get up to full strength. Also keep reinforcement costs down here. About three men out of five, and that squad are actually Grenadiers have been promoted to Panzer Grenadiers, if you will. Victor Pons Wise Blood has a small lead here. Greyhound at that, and of course, immediately veterans one, thanks to the armored battle group. Further south here, Bullard swing in there. First armored on the move there, second company. Mines here. Try and slow down any immediate push down the main road. Sturmgeschutz find on the way. We got the Panzers flanking around the captain here. Already of action to one. Captain there with his burning light machine gun is immediately overcome. So, a lot of engagement up north here. Glenys, but on their own, going to be raised hunt down by the Greyhound. We got Rafn occupying the center here. First armored swiftly into the center of Pakino. South here, Panzer Glenys with the scout. Stug 3D almost ready here for the third Panzer Glenys. Short scouts here being ripped apart. A bite intense assault of fight could get a wipe here on. Bullard, do I manage it? Mm, yep. Meanwhile, Stug 3G has arrived. Mine goes off here, blowing apart Bob. And I think that's just Bob's feet. Northy Greyhound raising about. Stug pushing on the center, adding the pen amount of machine and give out. Mine's in the center. Good work by Bullard. Victory point lost. 
Rather just being fired at there. Note, of course, he was actually quite quick to replace his lost engineers with another engineer squad with flamethrowers. Certainly highlighting, A, he wants stuff to repair his, you know, Greyhound, but also he wants some access to those mines. Back to Balat and first arm it. And of course, once he's got the ground out, he does go for the BIR, so he also got anti-tank gun since he has not seen the Sturmgeschutz. And he's punching something up here. Mines put us up because he had a... Doesn't have to repair it for mines. And particularly against the seen opponent who is going for early engineers as the Americans, they typically lay down mines. Ken Crowder's part of the Greyhound finally goes down. I was able to keep that Ken Crowder for a fair amount of time there, honestly, but, you know, not quite on the level of, like, you know, high level players. North here, the Rav's got being caught by the Gurneys and the Panzer Gurneys. Panzer Gurneys taking the flank route around the right from there, ready to cover the retreat path, maybe increase the chance of white here if Bullard is too slow to retreat. Stunker shots. Pushing south to catch him up here, the machine and give out. No point blank blast. Otherwise, that could have been some very dead rifleman. Mines here as well. Greyhound racing towards the center. Stu pursuing rifleman here with this machine and give out. And main gun, Grand pushing the center. Mines here spotted. And the Pani's actually risking wiped out. Almost dead though. Also suppressed my nearby Panzer gun dealer. Last ideal there. Panzer's rushing out. Stu rushing the center. I believe I do have the healing up now. Yes, indeed. Nemo Stu keep pushing for the ground. He's trying to. German infantry racing through as well. The center. Entertaining there, trying to catch up with the rapidly changing battlefield situation. South here. Panzer's the rough squad. Forced to retreat. And the Greyhound here is almost knocked out, but does narrowly escape. Another push for the fuel point here. Another attempt to stop the American fuel supply here. Pushing forward to aggressive the Stu. Hoping to catch the Greyhound, but I just fall short of it. Stug forced to pull back a bit. Got field repairs. We've got strength and steel. Sounds out here. Panthers catching Ralph's court here. Closing in Metro 2 already. And I haven't even gone for the opposite quarters yet. So these Panzer Grenadies have really been doing some heavy lifting here. And we're treating them due to the grenade. Could have tried to dodge it, but I. A lot of the time when they try to dodge a grenade and just get her out of this path, they typically tend to backfire on me, so I just typically tend to retreat. Hunter goes with Ralph's here, another push forward here, but Blatt, he wants that fuel point to remain American. Capal de Ladnon. Does a lot of damage here, but end up starting to retreat. Sturmgeschütz in the repairs. Further north here, we got the Glenys by the Northern Nations. Ralph's got pushing forwards. Moving forward here, Sturmgeschütz catching the captain and is quickly making short work of him. In fact, the captain, I think, was the first. No, oh, he's still alive. Entertain's got double up here, quickly A moving after the Stug. Second Sturmgeschütz ready. Of course, we'll need a machine gun for that, and I, of course, really should go for the officer quarters. North, we got the ground here, an aggressive pursuit of the ground here is. Stug's being dispatched northwards alongside a hefty contingent of German troops. Entertainment is holding up. Typically, a Panzer Gun Division would have that battalion of Stugs attached to it. It would have been the Panzer Battalion. Typically, they would have been using Stug 4s rather than Stug 3G for this purpose. Panzer Vars there, though. Damaging the engine of the Greyhound. Allowing me to finally get rid of that Greyhound. That is a small win there for the Fatherland. But as the war went on, Stugs would typically just press into a lot of, you know, different roles. Panzer Jaegers. And Panzers, as mentioned, they would even see service in the Schwerer Panzerjäger Teilungs alongside Yacht Panthers. So yeah, the Stugs really got around. Machine gun the flank forced away. South side, Panzers Panzers pushing in here. Map control remains fairly close here. So far, Betsy to Panzer Grenadier. Sam backs up. Stoops remaining sort of in a surf position around the center. Still not officer quarters. Definitely something, again, as mentioned, should really get going. And we got War Machine here from Bulat. An interesting choice. Not a bad one, though. Again, can allow your vehicles and tanks to be, you know, made a lot cheaper here. Panzer is ripping through the rifleman, forcing away there with a Sturmgewehr 44. In the center, we got Grandis. There's the rifleman. Up to full rifle towards Naivo Black plus the captain. 
This is my two grenadier squads and two panzer grenadier squads. So roughly equal numbers, but quality-wise, it's certainly a bit all over the place. <laughs> North of Fresh Post here by Bulat and the 1st Armored Division. Looking to reclaim the Northern Heights center of Burkina, though. Got the Stukes coming up. Engineers are being absolutely annihilated here by the assault guns. The Sturmgeschütze. Shooting Gewehr there being hold forwards. And got a Mechanus Assault Group here nearby support from a Panzer TV short and its armored infantry units. Filled with hardened Stastropen, pushing up to five infantry squads. Following back to my perspective. Big two pawns wise, I'm definitely building up more bleed now of blood. Panzer holding in the center up north here, grabbing with the riflemen. Yeah, really should get the officer quarters going here. South Pioneers here under Falcon Raft Court got the 251 half tick moving forwards. Quickly deploying the Stars Turban. Ripping through those Army Cannon in the center machining about Panzer pushing forwards and of course got the Stukes hanging back for now. Anti tanks holding southwards. Rifleman in there. Ooh, good hits on the anti tank. Half tank, the anti tank guns. Rifleman there being shredded by the Stars Turban. A light cover, nothing against the might. Of the German Panzer Grenadier of the more hardened kind. There we go. Entertainment's been caught almost by the Panzer's engineers being ripped apart here. That's it. These would probably benefit from being pulled back from healing now. They have very low on health. Stuke pushing forwards, machining, give advancing, and up north we got on the engaging Grenadiers was the captain, the rifleman there. A lot of fighting here, a lot of brutality. There we go. Two squads just pulled back out of the field. Picking up the middle of Schutzen Panzerwagen. We have vehicles ready to be deployed. And there we go, finally got the officer quarters going here. Pushing in here, we got a slip around the grenadiers running down here. I actually pushed straight through it. I wasn't actually paying attention to it. My grenadiers took a lot more damage. I hadn't, hadn't noticed this, so I sent him a troops here. And he's going to, I think, pop a grenade and get a wipe. Because, again, I was so preoccupied here. I wasn't doing this, like, realizing the situation up north. He's a blood scores an excellent kill on me. Push me down to four squads again. Though, admittedly, at this point, my infantry is certainly... In some regards, qualitatively much higher. The stars told my just ripping through the Americans, the G-43 and those MG-42s are terrorizing them. Unfortunately, my MG-42 though is not enough to stop all of them. Midler Schutz and Panzer holding back, Stukes remaining in center. A big concern about the anti tank guns, which is why I didn't bring them up here. As the Panther in particular around the center for Kino is a bit tough to manage, of course. Hopefully the July patch should of course make the center for Kino a lot more manageable, particularly for your Stukes. Still, victory points wise, I'm building a good lead here. Upgrading here for the medical convention for my half track because it's going to be veterans one, so it can actually provide cheap reinforcements with also fast reinforcements on top of healing, which you may notice kind of stacks if you can get an example of it, I believe. I get this and then this, I believe it actually causes them to heal even faster. So when you combine these two elements, it actually means like your units can be get really rapidly reinforced inside of your base. And a bit cheaper and also get healed faster. So suddenly your Panzer Grenadiers like can get back in the fight much faster. For example, your Stars to them. There you go. Bit of a thing I was trying out this match here. And suddenly again, I found myself like, you know, getting some pretty positive results out of the Stukes being repaired. In the south here, the first inflaming forwards. Grenadiers counter-attacking here. Close to Betsy 2. More right from pouring in here for Bulat. Starts from the move, and they've got three of them actually just merge kind of DC. Captain there being mauled. Could get a wipe here. Sturmgeschutz charging forwards. Round court there's about to be engaged. Pulling for a point blank shot. There we go. And somehow shot them through the wall, wiping the entire squad. I didn't actually notice this. Which leads to the more fun moment of, I, I have no idea then suddenly in the match, why there's suddenly like a BAR lift in the middle of the road. I'm just like, what? Up north here, Panzer is the right squad here. Intense fun here over the northern road of Pekino. Panzer is closing in there, closing in there too. Now partly again, thanks to that officer quarters bonus, they bet up faster. Always a good upgrade to have. Gone for the blitz in case I want some more transports, I believe. Forced away here in the south. 
should have been forcing healing here. And again, you can see there now, thanks to these two there, the healing is so much faster. Like, basically, both healing of the half track and the headquarters stack. And then you combine the rapid reinforcements ability, and you know, you can really just get your troops so much back faster back in the fight here. So, it's definitely, I think, something worth considering. Round squad here, white, that's two whites for Lampolat in a match of moments here, Stooks, they were point blank blast, are very good. Until the season in the center. Additional fun fact, a Stook would typically have like, you know, 33% armor piercing and the rest of it would large been high explosives with a few heat shells. Of course, it is then worth noting a lot of Stook crews would actually remove, well, the ammo racks and science to have room for more ammunition. So the actual ammunition distribution would likely have been, you know, a bit more 50-50, I imagine. It's one of those fun notes there. Browse could have been caught with the Stooks there. MP40 against another point blank blast here. Could Blatt suffer another wipe already? Or has Lady Luck funny? Starting to feel a bit sorry for him. Looks like that's the case. Got punch goes by here with the BAR. Hey Fitz, look at this. I'm an American. I've got a BAR. Ho oh, oh. ho. Silly Americans. Third Storm Gashuts on the way. Of course, I'm starting to expect, you know, ECH. I'm bringing more Stooks because I typically find one of the better counters to ECH. Currently, he's just going for a lot of Stooks and then trying not to lose the ball before the ECH arrives. Which, of course, is where the challenge is. Back to Bulat. Who does appear to be going now for the EC8. He's got the tank there prop, but he seems like he's just going to go straight for the EC8 now. Which is an interesting element, hinting, I think, at a Bulat. Clearly, hat plans like push for Shermans and all that, but clearly the situation for him has deteriorated to the point where he's kind of like, you know, turning over to, like, you know, the backup solution, which is just turning to the EC8. I think I'm going to give it a Panzer Grenadier. Of course, at this point, considering the double enter tank guns, I could consider going for Nebelwerfers. I could consider going for Mortars. I could even consider like, something like Stummels here. There's definitely a lot of potential I could really, like, just shut up the double enter tank, in which case, will not be in trouble. Of course, at the same time, he already is. He's actually being forced like, can't replace entire squads because of my Stugs and my Panzer Grenadiers. And of course, Star Storm here, catching the Americans. Quick Glen Cobra. Awesome with Riflemen. Then being seized by the Panzer, has got the Star Storm here, though there's a lot of angry Americans. Got Engineers, got Ralph Gold here, and he's coming to assist the Star Storm here. A few merges, got the Shock Assault ability popped here. Engineers taking immense losses. Bring up the MP40 going to see Riflemen being absolutely shredded here. I do wonder, has he actually gone for any of the upgrades? We do get advanced logistics, which makes his troop cheaper to reinforce, which is certainly big. But interesting enough, no survival training. And the centre, Pan's going to versus the Vetsy's Rav. Oh, Vetsy's in the free, actually. Ace Rav from there. The Medal of Honor type chaps. Pan's there, close to Vetsy's free. And further up north, we've got the bar wielding Panzer Grenadiers. as they're making progress. Machining away there, catching and a push here by the first armament into the centre of Pekino. Sturmgeschutz being repaired. Got the ambulance there still acting ambulancy. Blot with another push forwards here. Almost got the north sign again, and Bulat is definitely just moving towards that EC8. He's betting all in on it. And here, I actually push for the Panzer Company. Deciding I want something bigger, and also want Armored Science Ghost on the Stugs. But also, setting up for just maybe more Star Storm without having to call in, like, you know, another mechanized assault group, for example. Plus, in a pinch, like a Panzer IV. And this is also another thing I'm saying is actually going for the Storm Panzer to try and counter the anti tank gun. So, you know, this is one of those things, you know, with very much, you know, mid to late game, up to with this kind of build I'm going for. I tend to find myself struggling a bit, like, you know, with these situations. Like, sometimes I like, do just go for even more Stooks. Short answer. Typically should be yes, by the way. Or do I, like, you know, try and, you know, diversify a bit here. And sometimes I end up hesitating too much under these kind of circumstances here. So. Sometimes I don't. But it certainly highlights, you know, as a much late game, I feel like you have a lot more options than you did in Companies 2 because a lot of the options there were quite frankly rubbish. So splitting up my Stooks, sending some of my troops northwards, southwards. Aiming for a push into the south here with the third Panzer Gun LED be shown. Machine Gun Cam in the center. Could of course also consider another MG42 to be honest. 
over to me again. Got the Blitzkrieg ability. Which, by the way, also works really well with a lot of stoops. This is one of the reasons I actually like Blitzkrieg, besides being able to call in fast uh, mechanized assault groups. It is, in fact, a Blitzkrieg because it works really well with a lot of stoops, in my experience, anyways. Major infantry push here. German infantry routing the Americans here by the southern points. Charging in there. Chaos in Bullet Southern Lines. Center tank that's there. Are a bit of precarious position here. If I have Blitzkrieg, I could probably run them down with the Stoogs, honestly. Grenade assault instead here. Active laser for Blitzkrieg, but there you go. Right from close being marked out. Grenade on the MD42 here. Almost got it. Stoog the rushing into the assistance here. I'm also closing into the Tiger tank at this point, to be honest. So again, I have a lot of options at this point, like consider. North here points being seized rapidly for the fatherland. So quickly moving in there, need to withdraw the Sturmgeschütz a bit. Seize the center, of course. We got 280 troops on the 95. One Panzer escort is very close to the east level. Going for the armored side skirts. Neat little upgrade. But mentally, I do think it probably either needs a boost or they need to like tune penetration a bit there. But I like it. It looks really cool. Pushing north of the Ralph Court and the Captain there. Another attempt to grab the Northern Heights. Before pushing the Northern Victor Point. Got mines here. We have finished the research. Starts them with another shock assault here to help us slow down the American assault. In the south here, Bulat goes for a major move here. Grenadiers holding up here. Center, we got Ralph Court. We got the Panzer Gun DC. We got more trooping on the move, the machine gun holding back. I'm kind of scattered all over the place, honestly. Ralph Squad being caught by the Stugs. Right from the east level, 25 kills. Right into the Stug and more Panzer Gun here, so we're very close to the east level here. Up north there, mine explodes on the feet here of Blood's captain, leaving him quite exploded. Pushing south of the Stooks, and here I actually make a mistake tactically. I'm sending in my assault guns with no infantry support rather blindly. This is a big tactical error by me. I'm sending in now the other Stooks with some Panzers, but again, knowing that anti tanks is having a suspicion of it, I really should not be doing this. This is me getting way too overconfident here. My Stooks end up taking a lot of damage. And now, okay, I managed to extricate my Stooks, but then I commit my third Stook along some infantry still to this assault. This is me basically throwing good money after bad. That is, I'm committing to a bad decision, further wasting resources. And now Bulat is going to further, like, you know, punish for it by flanking with the EC, destroying one of my Stooks. Another Stook is also heavily damaged. And while I might be able to get the anti tank guns, I'm in a really bad position right now thanks to this. Like, I end up taking a lot of damage needlessly, and he can probably easily recruit the anti tank guns. So. This was a really, really bad engagement by me. I should not have committed to, but I did. And now Blatt is in a beautiful position to punish me brutally for committing against a really bad assault here. Like, had I not done this, I would have had three Stooks try and take on the EC. I could have, like, committed to a larger proper assault here with infantry, maybe to that position. Instead, I have now one Stooks that's about to blow up, and another one's in decent condition. He's got an EC that's half HP2, because, again, it gets to be veterans one immediately. So right here, things are turning fairly sour for me very rapidly. Up north, they push with the stars and the Pentagon Ds. Still got the victory point lead. I still got a good amount of resources. But again, I definitely like just made a massive error there. That really cost me. Like Blatt was just able to take up, take up two stoops for no real loss. And also gaining ZC8 like a lot of free experience. So, this was a really good engagement for Bullard. And helped make up some of those heavier losses we to inflict on earlier. Territory lost. Of course, what I should be doing here is actually like, you know, push more Stooks, maybe a Panzer IV. But what I instead end up doing now is actually trying to hold out for the Tiger Tank. And of course, there's nothing wrong with the Tiger Tank under most circumstances, but with only one Stug and literally no other anti-tank assets. This is a big mistake because it pretty much frees up the field here to the EC-8 as one Stug is not going to be able to stop the EC-8 even in my wildest of dreams. Northeast starts to mix around it. Forced withdraw here, so I'm 
basically here after one major error committing another big error further adding upon my mistakes here and of course the EC8 is like able to just murder my infantry because as a fun fact for some reason the EC8 currently has more AOE than the Tiger tank and I'm definitely expecting that to get there from the July patch but it definitely means you have to be careful so again by stalling for the Tiger tank on these current circumstances not because the Tiger tank is bad against the EC8 but rather in terms of like you know the current flow of the battlefield I end up conceding a lot more room and initiative to Bullard so suddenly again the entire battlefield is going to be a lot more hostile against it plus a lot of my units at the front are again absolutely mauled in the meanwhile but this is basically a large strategic area now we've got a machine gun wiped out as well here so again I'm just flailing about here because I for some reason decided you know what a tiger tank is going to totally save me here but in reality it's actually, you know, kind of sinking me to some degree. And because again, Bullard is now able to like gain most of the map, gain all of the victory points, gain the machine gun. So, big mistake there with me strategically here. What I should have done again is like either push that Panther for sooner, maybe with the officer quarters, or I should have gone for like two more Stukes to get back to three Stukes, at which point again, Bullard's EC8 would have been much more easily contained. While again, crucially, I would not have conceded as much the map here to Bullard. Back to Bullard, by the way. So yeah, that was a, uh, again, big mistake there. Tiger tank pulling forwards. Starts with the Assault Engineers here. Because otherwise, I kind of wouldn't be able to punish properly here like Bullard for going for the EC-8. I mean, he kind of made the mistake I did, but because of my mistake, Bullard got rewarded. And again, I kind of make the same mistake of rushing the Stook here. Blindly, no infantry support first ahead here into the anti-tank guns. Tight tank cores can shrug off the hits a lot better. You can actually clear out the anti-tank guns pretty easily, in particular when they're so bunched up. There we go, almost wiping that. Starts to melt around the flank here. Glenn is punishing up here. Pants going as well here. Both anti tanks cleared up. And here I actually make another mistake. I actually divert my troops towards the south here with the captain rather than move up towards the anti-tank guns to secure them and deny them. I also forget to order my tight tank not shoot at infantry, focus on the vehicle. So again, I actually, at this point, I'm just making mistake after mistake. I'm basically tilted and I'm just, you know, making more and more questionable decisions here. Basically, to a large degree, throwing away an otherwise, you know, winnable match. Tight tank course is doing a lot of damage, but it doesn't matter if I'm not properly supporting it with my infantry. Or for that matter, I've keep throwing away my stoops. Meanwhile, Bullard is making sure to keep his EC supported a lot of the time here. And then detain guns and infantry. And at that point, it's like, you know, winning most of the engagements because I'm starting to handle them very poorly. So this is, you know, basically you know, a case of throwing the match by me at this stage. Northy Rathbun Corp, the Panthers and the Stars Torben moving in here. Ripping through them. Of course, it's theoretically not impossible to turn around me at this point. Like, I still I still have a Tiger Tank. I still have a good amount of Elite Infantry. I do have the Half Track that allows me to quick reinforce, heal, and also do all of this at a slight discount. So it's not like I have no ways of getting back into this fight. But I'm committing a lot of errors that is basically making the chances of this actually happening uh, a lot more limited. It's the nice way to put it. Also find out here, apparently you can't set down a handbrake on the ambulance. You can do it with the DAC ambulance, but the Wehrmacht ambulance, you cannot set up a handbrake. Trying to aim for two here. Again, big loss, loss of the Bullard, honestly. Big loss. Easy again for the base again. Titan and veterans one holding it back. Mines here from Bullard. Very good there. Got Ace Punch going to here with 34 kills. I mean, they can really pack a punch once they get going. And again, officer quarters is, I find, quite an important here. Like, people tend to only go for the Stukes at the moment, but I think it's also, like, quite important for the Pans going this because you do want them to take actually two and three faster than the Rifleman can a lot of the time. Got the Stars from there. Rifle Squad being caught between two fairly elite units, but the Rifleman themselves are tough, hardened bastards as well. Rifle Squad being forced back. Tag tank good to go. Now the Stuke slowly on the way. EC by the way is close to the east level. Cat 
catching my troops and delivers a hell of a hit in the run to the midst of them. Causing immense amounts of damage. Again, the EZ has some insane anti-infinite damage. Which is kind of crazy, and again, I'm fairly certain it's going to get nerfed. Pushing forwards against the EZ, being baited into the anti-tank guns. Again, I am making another tattoo at this point. Great shots from the EZ, though from the Stugan, my... And Tiger Temple, there you go, you see, it's just breaking apart my infantry, which again I just kept on the open, lost my Panzer Grenadiers pointlessly. In the center, machine pushed back, I should have pushed towards the center of the north of my Tiger and Stuka should have tried baiting in the EC at the position where the anti-tank guns couldn't just easily A move after to support it. Got one, the anti-tanks there, of course, Tiger Tank can one-shot anti-tank guns quite well, thanks to the mighty 80 mm gun. Stuka pushing forwards here. For some reason, the path thing got put on a bad path here. Trying to clear out the engineers. And to tank gun here. Clearing out. Soul damage hits you on the EC8. Back to B. But yeah, it's looking pretty bad. He's got another EC8 by now, so at this stage, it's pretty much game over. EC8 is all just racing away here. Can't catch up with it. Again, the loss of the infantry means it could, like, Easy to clear out the anti tank and allow the Tiger and the Stuka to focus on the EC. So at this point, it's very much GG. Game over, a complete loss for me. I threw the match, as mentioned there. It was not just like you know, one decision, a series of bad decisions. And the major one here was basically again the push with the double Stuka, well, the triple Stukes. And again, not just withdrawing and bringing in more infantry to clear it up. Maybe again, how to, you know, persevere, preserve those Stukes. I could like, you know, push for a Panther 4 or Sturm Panther. Boom, again, I've been in a much better position. And then I actually was. And again, this allowed EC to snowball and again, just slowly win the game to a large degree on the back of it, backed up with the center tank guns. And again, I just kept making more and more mistakes. So definitely something to avoid. Then again, picking your engagements or finding coming through is quite crucial. And of course, the other mistake was going for the tire tank in the way I did. I mean, clearly they're doing a lot of damage, but because of the situation I pushed it into and the lack of support for it, it ended up not being able to do as much as it could. That set the half tank with veterans one here was quite handy. Really allowed me to control the field better. And there was a lot of you know nice stuff. The Panthers I think were quite well with veterans. Obviously, they really ripped through his infantry. Of course, the Stugs were doing quite well until I threw them away. But that, of course, definitely I almost had him, but in part because again he insisted on focusing like you know war machine going for that, and then suddenly switched towards the EC8, which again meant he like had no real armor for a long period of time there. And again, had I not messed up, he'd probably have been toast. So this was very much what you'd call a throw. But hope you enjoyed this match. You learned something from it. Hope it gives you a match. Some new thoughts on tactics and strategies and what to do and not to do. If you did like it, you can subscribe and, of course, like the video. You can share it with other people. And, of course, support the podcast by donating on Patreon. Patreon. This is Imperial Cheers. And see you all tomorrow for our last episode. Bye, everyone.